Some of you know what I'm about to say. I'm seeing things that I never want to see. So you're using groups for most of your containers and that is not a thing to do. In the beginning, when you don't know, I understand that it makes no sense. Like, why is this bitch saying no groups? If I have a set of four elements in a group, and if I have a set of four in a frame, when I'm taking my group and I'm then resizing it, you can see how the entire thing is just like flexing and all. I'm taking a, a frame and I'm resizing the frame, my elements inside are staying true to their sizes and behave properly. Meaning that if for some reason I wanted that element to be stuck with my constraint in a frame, that means that now I can have an element that is like working perfectly and not have things resize themselves. Or this one, for example, it could be like this so that you have the ability to extend and it's always the same size. It's always good. And the constraint will help you. If you have groups, you don't have constraint available. So you will always end up with, at some point, not paying attention, removing something or extending a section somewhere on your website and then one of your group is going to do that and you didn't plan on doing that so the the amount of time that i've seen my own design in the beginning of figma when i started using it and i just resized the entire page to ensure that things were properly placed one of the things that i can recommend you to do i'm taking my first group and then i'm using a plugin that is called simulator in simulator i will say layer type which is group right now and so it will just take all of the elements that i have on my page that is called a group I do selection, whatever. Once every group has been selected, I'm going to group at the top, switching that to frame. They are all frames now, but then you can see that inside of them, you still have groups. So I'm using command option P to relaunch the same plugin. That's a way to go faster if you really need to select everything. That's the first thing. Though I'm saying frames right now, but I would rather you use not frames. I would rather you use auto layout frames rather than just single frame. So shift A will give you the ability to get auto layout frames. What an auto layout frames give you the ability to change some spacing between your elements or automate all of that, meaning that if for some reason that feature section has just one line, everything will stack together and it will be much better. So when you have your elements in your design here, the only thing like that's one of the issue, like for example, this block of text is fixed in its height when it should just hug the content and then the rest of the content should go up. So in order to achieve to layout frames, ensure that you have the thing that are supposed to be together selected and then just create a group or frame from it and you can directly do shift a automating to layout will help you in the long run once you have auto layouted most of your content that will help you to then give you the ability to resize things so let me just do that in the header because right now that's way too much content so if this is your current home page size thingy whatever and then you wanted to make it smaller or make it bigger if you do that nothing happens so with an auto layout base, you can have this thing as an auto layout here. And so now I can say that this element is going to check left and right. So if I'm resizing my frame, you can see that my header is going to resize itself properly according to the size of the screen. That's some of the benefits of auto layout. You can do that with constraint without auto layout. It's an option as well, but it's just weird to achieve with just constraint. Like it's this one's going to be on this side. This one's going to be on the other side. And this one's going to stay top and center. And it's going to achieve the same thing. But you can see because this element is a fucking group and not a frame it's flexing all of the content which is weird that way you can say okay so i have my full size 1920 and i have my small size at 1440 and I have my really small size at a thousand and then underneath i need to break that layout to something that makes more sense for tablet for example that's easier to understand but then at some point it's going to be too small so we need to remove that and change it to an icon most people are going to do that manually in the beginning because they don't know that you can use the features that you have if you want a bit of a, an insight i think i did this thing it's a five minute base on the layout and how it works which is a scripted video if you want to watch that basically just said but in a more formal way of presenting the data it's good